Hey, and welcome back to another episode. It, actually, this is a kind of a Halloween episode, even though it might be a day after Halloween. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, you know, we're in the vape. We're know, in the area. You know, listen, right? Like, there's people uploading Halloween v- episodes at the time of this recording, which is a Friday. So, I mean, listen. Who cares the fuck? Yeah, as long as we're in that general area. I mean, heck, I remember people, freaking stores put Halloween co- stuff up at the, at, like, mid-September sometimes. All right? And let's not get into Christmas stuff. Yeah, because, uh... <laughs> No, we're gonna get, maybe we'll do a Christmas thing. I don't know. We'll see. But um, for the fun of it, I thought me and Joey can go into another movie. Uh, I know we just got done talking about Dune, which uh, was really fun. Uh, and after this, we're probably going to talk about Marvel's Eternals because it's, it's coming out next week. Yeah, yeah, pretty stacked. So, uh, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you go for it. No, no, I, yeah, so you were, like, thinking to do a little special Halloween episode. Yeah, yeah, watch. yeah. Uh, a horror movie, right? Yeah. And I was like, all right, fine, I'll let you choose. And I was like, let's go with a classic. Let's go with Evil Dead. <laughs> Sam Raimi's uh, directorial debut. Yeah. He's it nicely because Sam Raimi did Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, obviously, Bruce Campbell's, I think, what, also debut as an actor, yeah, right? Yeah, his so, first uh, on screen role. Yeah, and, you know, it, it launches both of their careers, you know. Uh, yeah, Evil Dead is, uh, is sort of like, uh, was kind of like seen, it's like, it's sort of like one of the, I guess, you can kind of link it to being a very solid, like, indie film, because it was very, it was an independent film. Yeah, it was, it, it was his, I think he, Sam Raimi shot it when he was at 20 years old, and he had to get, like, backing from, like, a lot of local people. Mm. So that kind of, that, kind of, that was the thing with it, and it's... It was introduced in like a film festival for like a horror film festival kind of thing. Yeah, and I think Stephen King really liked it, and that's how it, I think, got further distribution rights from mm-hmm. like Paramount or whatever. But uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's sort of seen today as you know as a classic, a cult classic because mm-hmm. you know it, it didn't have the marketability of a Nightmare on Elm Street or Friday the Thirteenth. No, it was very much like if I were to compare it to any like horror movie that is like. And then, like, the mainstream, it's, like, the the first Halloween, uh, John Carpenter's Halloween. Yeah, which, uh, similarly, you know, didn't have uh, that sort of, I guess, mainstream appeal at the time. But nowadays, you know, it just, you know. It, it I mean, just... it started the whole slasher thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, yeah, The Evil Dead is, uh, you know, it was made in the uh, 1981, I think. Yes. Yeah, so and it's you can even you can tell it is sort of very low budget at least in terms of the just camera direction. It seems like there's a lot of like not a whole lot of lighting. Uh, or no, least... and uh, can I just say it it works that way though too. I mean, yeah, given you know the genre it's going for it, you mm. know, being a horror film, right? Mm. Uh, and yeah, it's a it's a pretty. Uh, I don't know because I'm usually uh, not like fully into horror films. Mm-hmm. And I will say this: it it, it, it does its job well. Uh, very suspenseful. Lots of uh... oh, dude, there's like so many quiet moments in this film. Yeah, that like really just like sets you up. And there's like there's a moment with uh, and by the way, we'll we're gonna spoil this movie because this movie's from the eighties. Yeah, if it... you haven't seen it, you should watch it now. It's like really cool. It's really, um, I mean, if you're not into like any of the old stuff, um, maybe not. But I guess you can watch the reboot. I thought the reboot was fine, but I'm I'm still kind of a fan of the old ones. Mm-hmm. But um, there there are like there's a moment where Bruce Campbell is it's by himself and he's just like, first off he's by the door, which is, you, should, you should never do. <laughs> yeah. Um. It, it, it's just so quiet, and I swear for me it felt like it felt like an eternity, and that's not a bad thing. Just like the the the, the quietness of that scene really just like makes you like. Like go like oh man it's just like anything can happen and it's it's like and then comes in the jump scare, but it's done in a way where like there's a moment where you feel like it's safe. Yeah, which is uh sort of different because like, when you compare it to like a, some some modern day uh, horror stuff, they 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 try to build up the suspense with using like sort of like music in the background, mm-hmm. right? Like sort of that like right, like yeah. uh, like violins or whatever slowly build that up mm. but here you know it, it, it makes a you know it, it's a it's a stylistic choice to do just fully quiet just sort of let uh the scene speak for itself a little bit before 
getting into that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I like. I think uh, something similar is that there's a lot of like POV shots in this movie. That yeah, I, right. And I was like, oh man, Joy's gonna love this because it's interesting to me just because like it's not even like from uh bruce campbell's perspective no it's like everybody gets like a pov shot at some point especially from uh the uh the people who are get, get possessed by the uh demons mm-hmm. right uh Le- this is basically a possession movie yeah like linda or whatever you know she's yeah. like they trap her in like the cellar and there's like various shots of just her perspective of just watching mm-hmm. everybody else yeah you know and it's like that's kind of neat right we get we get sort of that stuff, and as well as the 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 whole stuff whenever they're in the forest, and then like we have the this unseen force, the uh... oh yeah, Cheryl. <laughs> I, had oh, the, I made sure I had the the cast up so we knew who we were talking about because there are times where I could forget the the characters' names. Yeah, because I I guess that is sort of like the one detracting is because uh, you know Bruce Campbell's character Ash, we know the other dude, and we know Ash's girlfriend. But, like, the other two are kind of exchangeable just because they, like... <laughs> they look dre- very similar. They, yeah, they look similar and dress very similarly. Yeah. Which is, like, I don't know. It's probably just the can, style. Can I say, everyone's made this joke. It's really weird that um, Ash, who at this point in the, sh- in the movie is called Ashley. Yeah. Because that's his real name, is Ashley Williams. Is like, everyone, everyone's making the joke that, dude, like, you're, you and your friend brought, like, you brought your sister as the fifth wheel. It's a little weird. I mean, I don't know. I guess, you know, maybe they were like... <laughs> Let's have fun. There's not, nothing, nothing bad's going to happen. We're all just going to hang out. We're all friends. I mean, yeah. Or just like, uh, you can't leave your sister here by herself in, 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 in the house. Take her with you, you know? Yeah. Like, Be a good brother. Yeah. And then, you know, they all get, you know... <laughs> he ends up killing her. Yeah. Lots of, uh, lots of that stuff, huh? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, uh, like... Because I was thinking of saying earlier, because, I don't know, that's always, like, I guess the most uh, iconic thing about the Evil Dead uh, was, like, that, uh, that camera, the camera shots of, uh, that, like, the unseen, like, demon force in the forest just yeah, following everything. which was, which, like, at the time, like, which was, like, a really cool shot back in the day, especially because, like, I mean, this is what you get from a lot of indie films. Like, they're very, like, creative sometimes. Yeah, like, they have a small budget. And they have to like do as much as they can with that budget. Yeah, and, and that, the re- and like nowadays you can be like, oh, you know, there's like a like a machine that you can just you know you roll it. What they did was like they put a camera on a two by four, and just ran with it. Yeah, yeah, that, and that seems pretty like that's a uh, pretty uh, DIY stuff, mm-hmm. right? Which like, I'm like, for now it's like, I mean, yeah, you could but... get like a dolly, which is basically something similar to that, or like a camera rig. You know, you just like put like a put like a harness on you, and you put the camera there. And Actually, you can, like, do that. I think this is. I, I might be wrong on this, but the uh, at the end of the movie where, um, we get the last shot of the uh, of whatever thing the the spirit is chasing them, and it goes like from the backyard to the house. Yeah. I suppose I might be wrong on this, but I remember hearing that that was actually um, Sam Raimi on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> running through all the way to getting crashed into Bruce Campbell. I mean, I don't know. I, it sounds believable, but then you think about like, okay, he has he he's going through. It's going through the house. Yeah. And granted, the doors open by themselves, so yeah. you could probably be like, you have people ready to go to open so mm-hmm. that he goes through. But it's like, at the same time, I mean, they're in there. It's a cabin in the woods. I feel like it'd be hard to you know try to traverse a bike on the camera and stuff mm-hmm. like that but i don't know i mean it, it, it sounds like one of those like that seems like something uh in in, the, in like sam Raimi would do right yeah you know, like you, like like you don't disbelieve it yeah you don't disbelieve it but it's it's hard to believe it's hard to imagine yeah yeah because it's just like <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i, I want to see the behind the scenes footage of that um but no yeah you, you you're right in the it's very evil. Like, you, you see the origins of a lot of stuff that you come to associate with Evil Dead. And later on in the sequel, Evil Dead 2, which we're not going to talk about that. Maybe for next Halloween. Uh, which, I'm not going to lie. It's, I mean, out of, of all the Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2 is probably my favorite. I mean, yeah. Because I, like, I know about the Evil Dead franchise. This is the first time I've ever, like, seen, like, the like one of the movies. Because mm-hmm. I always knew, like, yeah, the first one is sort of a cult classic indie film. Uh, super horror. Uh, then the second one, sort of like, 
as a like horror, but it's a it's a comedy horror, yeah. black comedy. Like, like you've 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 seen the scenes where like Bruce Campbell's like like acting with like just hamming it up with like all these like possessed objects around him in the house. Yeah, and then like, he's like, <laughs> yeah, and stuff. then you get the iconic, you know, he, he you know he has his gets his hand cut off. He you know they put he puts a chainsaw. He goes groovy, groovy. Yeah, you know, and then. You know, the third one, he gets, you know, he's uh, stuck in the middle of times, Army of Darkness. Yeah. And he's just sort of like, this is my boomstick. It goes boom. Mm. You know, and that's sort of like kind of where I think most people kind of associate Evil Dead nowadays. Yeah. It's sort of like, it's kind of, it has horror, but it's campy, you know? Yeah. And I think that's what eventually why a lot of people tend to gravitate to that reboot. Because it's like a return to form. And especially because like, the... The gore in this movie is well done for an indie, mm-hmm. and we could probably talk about this later. But it, it was it can be very graphic at times. Like this is a specific scene that I come to think about where like, and I think everyone talks about this scene. It's the pencil scene. Yeah, yeah. Where uh, I believe it's Ash's girlfriend. She gets stabbed in the leg with a pencil. Well, not the leg. It looks like it, I think it was the Achilles. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, I and, so. and like it and like we you and I were talking about this before recording and we were in you were saying the thing that makes it so uncomfortable is that they stay like it's a long shot of like of it being stabbed and like they have, you can see like the churning of the pencil yeah like the, the actor like because obviously one it's a pro like they're stabbing what it probably is a prop to set to like mm-hmm. bleed that much but the fact that the actor just goes all in and just just swirls it around in there, like just real, just, really ugh. jabbing it in, yeah. And you just stay on that, and you, you the only thing you cut to is like her screaming, and you cut back and forth to that, and it's like, mm-hmm. Jesus. I mean, uh, you want to give like a one minute review before we continue talking? Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, we could do that. Yeah, we, yeah, because I, I mean, I feel like we could talk about, we can just keep talking about this, uh, the stuff that this movie has done for like. For a good for as long as we can, but like we still have to give a review before, before we get we continue on. So I'll let you go off first, dude. Okay, all right. So yeah, uh, the Evil Dead uh, hailed as a cult classic, and I firmly agree with that statement. You know, uh, it, it truly does uh, horror, at least it, it's sort of own horror uh, very well. Uh, you know, Sam Raimi, sort of seeing the origins of Sam Raimi's directing style. And all the quirks he does is pretty neat to see, especially because I feel like a lot of it, you can kind of see some bits of this transitioning into Spider-Man. Uh, Bruce Campbell obviously does a great job. I think all the actors do a great job with what they have. Uh, and, you know, it's it's a it's a successful indie uh, start and sort of like the... Uh, it's kind of like seeing an origin story for a, a director that I think most people now know and respect. And yeah, I think Evil Dead is just a very good horror film, uh, which is not something I often say because I'm not usually that big onto horror. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it's like I feel like between you and me, I'm more uh, I tend to like horror more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think but, you're you're the you're the, like the, the main horror. One. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know, I'm not saying I'm into all horror. I'm I tend to be like more into like psychological, mm-hmm. so like Baba Duke. Um, in a way, Signs of the Lambs and all that stuff. Like I still haven't seen Lamb and I still haven't seen um, Midsummer, but they sound like my my kind of movies. But uh, my turn with this. So obviously, I I I'm a I'm a bigger Evil Dead fan than Joey here is. And man, seeing the where it all started, it it really puts into a large perspective. And a lot of the if you're a gore fan, then I think you'll like some of the practicality they use with this film, because they go ham and stuff. The acting is well done for an independent film, especially a first-time director. And you, it's it, like Joey said, it's it's interesting to see sort of the the beginnings of Sam Raimi and stuff that he would later incorporate into later films, especially even like Spider-Man, because like that's the one we all talk about. That's the one he's most famous for, the original Spider-Man. But aside from that, I think this is just if you want to see like what you can do as an indie filmmaker or like what it's possible for to do at a low budget. I think Evil Dead Stands is like one of the movies to look to and be able to really enjoy that kind of film. But yeah. Yeah, no. Uh... no I mean, like if, rating wise, I give this like a nine, like, like a, a nine out of 10. 
I think I would have to agree with you on that one. Like, yeah. it, 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 you know, for being, and this isn't even just because it's Sam Raimi or whatever. Like, if I was just like, if you, if I was to go into this movie without knowing who Sam Raimi was, or just the legacy of the Evil Dead franchise, I think I still would give this like a nine out of ten because it's it's a good horror movie. You know, it, it does stuff well. <laughs> Yeah, like it, mm-hmm. it, you know, it's not like it's a, it's like an hour and a half. It it does all, you know, it 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 sort of like sets the stage pretty well and pretty fast. You know, you sort of know what you're getting into, and you know, it builds it, whatever it needs to do to build up the horror. It does, and you know, it even has like some very off like moments. Like there's the scene where uh, uh, Ash is in the basement and all this stuff. Like you know the it's when like the record player starts playing by itself yeah. like the, that stuff where it's sort of, like it's sort of like this weird like comedic moment but you also know it's like you know it's mm. bad vibes because it's not like normal mm. so yeah I don't know it, it you know it has like which I guess to hear you could see that as maybe being the origins of where the series eventually turns into being somewhat comedic mm-hmm. with like that scene because. It's just him being assaulted by various objects, mm. and you know, you know, he's just sort of having to like live through whatever the hell's going on in this basement. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, Evil Dead is uh, a very good movie. Yeah, especially because it's a, a very like when I mean it's an independent film that I feel like anyone who wants to do movies and feels like I don't have the budget for it can still like, apply. Like, there's a scene where Bruce Campbell is like looking in the mirror. And just the the camera effects, like it's it can be a, a simple edit here and there. It's where he puts his hand on the mirror and his and it goes through and it's like a puddle of water. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's a creative scene for like a movie that you know is like low budget. Yeah, like uh, you know they obviously had to like do some trickery for that stuff. Mm-hmm. And even there are like I think moments where like I think they had to and the budget on i think it's the the stop motion scenes they have oh my god the stop motion scenes were amazing <laughs> yeah i'm just like uh i was surprised because i didn't know that was gonna happen i think it was just i, I thought most of the special effects were just gonna be like costumes and like the gore aspects but no there's like a whole section towards the end where it's just full stop motion and it's pretty uh cool but also very gross <laughs> that's one way to say it yeah because like there's some like gross stuff going on because it's like just bodies decomposing essentially. Yeah, just... I will say like it being old and being able to watch it nowadays is is a bit distracting because there's moments I'm like, oh, I can see, uh, like it, it's a little like you can see it being fake. Yeah, yeah, like, I, I... like there's some oatmeal there. <laughs> yeah, I guess if you you know see, seeing it in a bit higher quality and you're like, oh, okay. I mean, yeah, but at the same time, like, I don't know. For me, I wasn't necessarily paying attention that much. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, because, like, when, I feel like it's, that's more of a thing if you're just, like, uh, really trying to pay attention to that stuff. Because if you're just, if you're not and you're just immersed in, like, the movie and, like, where it's going, yeah, you don't really see that. You're just seeing, like, some weird shit going on. Mm-hmm. Also, just, like, go, go, to go on, the, the the effects in this movie were is so good that... <laughs> Surprisingly, this movie got an NC-17. Yeah, yeah. If you go... Do you want to explain the whole NC-17 to people who don't I, Yeah, okay. I mean, um, it's not that complicated, but basically, it, it's you know, it's just a rating. It's from the, the rating systems, right? You got, mm-hmm. like, you know, G, PG, uh, PG-13, uh, R, and, uh, you know, how R is usually restricted, like, it's, like, you know, 18, but you can go into it if you have... An adult with you if you're not over 18 nc-17 is sort of like literally like yeah no children are under 17 like legit like you know and it's very it's like a very rare rating because mm-hmm. it's often just usually reserved for like uh either like films that are just like w- super graphic in violent or sexual matters usually mm-hmm. sometimes mostly both i think uh uh, I think off the top of my head, I think some a fantasy example would be like Deep Throat, which is like about, 
I think it's about a prostitute who, you know, does stuff with her throat, obviously. Uh, this got really weird. <laughs> I mean, I listen, that's like one of the examples I can think of off the top of my head, but basically that's what sort of the NC-17 rating was made. No, because... no, 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 you, you have to use it as an example, and like, it's it's clearly, from what you said, it's clearly obvious what happens there. Um, yeah. I don't blame you. And you kind of get why it was, but like, at the same time, because one of the reasons why is the gore effects and also the the scene in which um, Bruce Campbell's characters, uh, Ash Williams, Ashley Williams, sister gets attacked by trees, and it looks very um, sexual. Yeah, that's probably the best way to put it. Yeah, if, if yeah, it's probably like the probably the uh, one of the most famous scenes in the movie, but mm. more for just how weird it is. Yeah. And heck, even like Sam Raimi came out and was like, yeah, that was, I did not meant for that to happen. Like, like, like like that wasn't like the intention and he feels very bad for making people think that was. Yeah. Yeah. Like, (laughs) I'm just sort of, I think I remember watching this scene. I'm just like, this is just kind of bizarre, mainly because it's sort of like, it doesn't seem like it really affects the rest of the story about what happens. Obviously, she's very like. Traumatized. Traumatized by, like, you know, I was attacked by the woods. There's something out there, right? Mm -hmm. But it's sort of like, it could have just been, like, easily just been, like, being pelted or, like, choked to nearly death by tree branches or whatever, not Mm -hmm. just, like, some weird, like, pseudo, like, uh... Yeah, yeah. Thing you would find on the internet kind of thing. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Things you shouldn't be finding. Yeah, I mean, unless you're into that, which is, like, I mean, I'm not gonna judge. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's it, it's just it's like kind of like a interesting scene. I'm just like, well, this doesn't feel like it need like it's it's like you could easily like I guess maybe not edit it out, but more sort of like just change up how it looks, tone it down a bit. Yeah, tone it down a bit because if you, obviously if you're just going for like trees start attacking a woman. You know, it's like uh, you know, there's multiple ways you can do that, and just the way they did it is just sort of. Very questionable. I mean, if I think it's probably like maybe the one scene I think some people would be like very sort of like uncomfortable with, uncomfortable with, or it's like I don't know if I can, should watch this movie, but it's literally like the it's like just that one scene and that's mm. it in terms of like that sort of. I mean, at the, at the, I mean that's kind of the thing about this movie. Like a lot of the stuff feels very effective, and I, I, you know, this is a bit of a tangent, but I think they did something similar in the reboot with the trees. And uh, a female character. It's been a while since I've seen the reboot. Mm. Um, but they did do it in Evil Dead too. But except that one, it, a woman got clearly split in half. Even though we don't see her get split in half. Mm, okay. Yeah. And, you know, that's sort of like, okay. So, you know, that, that's... He's sort of, Yeah, I guess it's sort of like, maybe even back then it's like, yeah, no, let's not, like... Let's not do that again. Yeah, that's, that's probably, that was probably just weird. <laughs> yeah. But I will say, like, a lot of the uh, the gore effects, you know, going back to that, is is really, like creative and also very unsettling like the the scene that i always go to when i'm thinking about this aside from the pencil scene is the scene where um the other dude's girlfriend mm-hmm. uh, i think the girl's name is shelly where she gets possessed and the boyfriend tries to cut off her hand because she has the kandarian dagger and as soon as like she's like oh i'm in pain and she's like Starts like biting her hand off. I was like, Jesus Christ! And the fact that like they're just they're just watching her do it and like. Uh, Granted, I would be like, I would be frozen in fear too. <laughs> yeah, and like the other one just like in the cell, just going, yeah, 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 do it, do it, do it. Yeah, <laughs> just like yeah, that's very that's like a you know that's I was like a Jesus, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> yeah, and then but like. It's even more unsettling because, like, when she gets stabbed by, like, the Kandarian dagger, all she does is, like, scream in pain for, like, a good two minutes. And I'm just like, okay, this is a little unsettling. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, and then, like, you know, but I love, this is one thing I always loved about, like, the possessions in in, uh, Evil Dead. It's like, they talk shit to you. (laughs) Yeah, like, like, I think uh, when uh, Ash's girlfriend gets possessed and, like, he's threatening the shooter and like you know then there's in the bit so just like you won't do it do it why don't you kill it you love her so much right do it do it <laughs> do it you know and they are they always just chanting join us join us but my favorite one is when he and um the boyfriend i think is i want to say his name is sean i got it right here hold up 
But like when he's killing uh, the girlfriend, she's like, "No, no, you love her, you love her." But he keeps on like, you know, he just because like, yeah, he has like the the the, the axe, yeah. right? He's just like, "Oh, die!" Same Scott, but yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, he's just like, and then, and like the blood gets on the camera, and it's like, oh, so cool. But, yeah, but, but I love the fact that he's like, "No, no, you love her though," and he's like, "I don't give a fuck right now. I'm just, I just want to live. I want to live." Which speak, which in a way you can say it speaks to 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 maybe to him or like just the fact that he might know that she's like completely gone. Yeah, because I mean, it does seem like basically there's no coming back. Yeah, from being possessed, like you gotta like because uh because they you know they find the book and mm-hmm. you know you know it's because of the recording that like read aloud summons the demons, like you know the dude just talks that the only way I could like save my wife was just to dismember her. And, you know, burn the body or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, like, that's sort of like, at least Ash knows, like, yeah, there's there's only one way. Mm-hmm. And even he can't, like, bring himself to, like, dismember his girlfriend. Which I gotta say, the girlfriend being possessed, like, just her freaking laugh, dude. Oh, no, yeah. So. It's, it's, a, it's like the, like, whenever, whenever you go to, like, a haunted house or whatever and you hear, like, little children laughing, it's that. Yeah, it it's is that. so creepy. And, it is so unsettling. Yeah, it's so creepy. I'm just like, just, just stop laughing, please. Stop it. I love the part where he slaps her. Yeah, he just like slaps her. He's like, stop it, stop it. Which I'm, it's like you can see the beginnings of like the the comedy aspect of Evil Dead. Yeah, and and I will say like this, it's um, just just to, to be. Because it's that and, like, being tortured by his sister who's locked in the basement. It's like, Jesus Christ, this man, like, is, like, kind of losing his head. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Like, you can tell, like, he's he's watched all his friends and loved ones getting possessed by demons and, like, getting killed off. And mm-hmm. he, he had to, like, just also fight them being possessed, too. And he's just sort of, like, losing his mind, which, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, I, like, that makes a ton of sense. Yeah, and, like, and just considering how this connects to Evil Dead 2 and how, like, it, because in Evil Dead 2, Ash basically becomes, like, no, I've been through this shit before. I'm not falling for it again. It's like, I had it up to here with this demon I bullshit. I had it up to here. Because, <laughs> like, there's scenes where, like, they they like they would, in a way, like, make it just, like, just like the original where, like, I'm gonna, it's, she sounds like she sounds like she's okay. I might open the cellar. And Ash is like, nope. No, don't do it. Don't do that. You don't want to do that. Because he's been through this shit. Yeah. And it's it's like, it's like one of those things where I've always loved about Evil Dead. It's like, there's a, there's a through-line character, and you see him grow. Yeah. And you can see the beginnings of that here. But, uh, I don't know. Uh, what else do you, you want to go with to talk about? Just uh, I don't I can't... Um... I don't know. I think I mentioned it slightly uh, in, like, my one in review, but... Yeah, there's like a lot of there's like some moments here where I I, I kind of can see it like you know, from Sam Raimi, you know, his directing style that I'm like I can kind of see this in the Spider-Man movies a little bit. Right. I mean the, the the most like famous one it's it's from Spider-Man 2 and it's when the scene where um the uh Doc Ock the do- yes, the one everyone goes to the Doc Ock scene and like it cuts away cuts to so many things. Yeah. You see that in like the in when Ash goes into this this the the cellar, or whatever, uh-huh. and it's cutting to all those things he that he's grabbing. Yeah, and like just that that soft moment of like, ah, I can't want to do this. Yeah, and it's it's very more apparent in like Evil Dead too, because like, because that's where you know it really comes into term in Evil Dead too. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's his third movie. I don't know. Yeah, because I think he did a second movie. I think it was called. Uh, I think I looked this up. I think it was Crime Wave or something. Yeah. Uh, but Did that was well. yeah, that was a sort of a financial bomb, and then like I think some, I think producer friend he met he 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 had was like you guys should uh, work on Evil Dead too. I think that that should really boost you guys back up, mm-hmm. and which you know that yeah it, it did, you know, uh, but yeah no like I, you know there's like it, it, it like I said it's like super interesting seeing sort of Sam, like this being Sam Raimi's like first big film. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure he's made other like short films before, but this is like his first like I guess theatrical. Well, movie from film. my um, from the little research that I've done, he did do like an early version of this movie, and so when he finally got the budget to do it better, he, it was this. 
And then, you know, later on, Evil Dead 2, Army of Darkness kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's just super interesting because, like, this, it feels like this is, you know, like, an origin story, essentially, for, for, for Sam Raimi. And you get to see, like, like, all his sort of creative inputs and, like, how he f- looks at, like, making a film. Mm-hmm. And you can kind of see, you know, that blueprint in, like, his later films, you know, like the Spider-Man movies, like mm-hmm. I said earlier. Yeah, it, it, I don't know. It's just super interesting sort of seeing you, it as, like, you, sort you of... You know a, one of the things that, is, that, I, that, I, that I liked about in this movie that, that Sam Raimi did was just, like, the Dutch angles, the close-ups, and, like, just the creative areas of where to put the camera on. Like, there was a moment where, like, like literally, it's like looking up at Ash. Like it's at it, the camera's on the floor, mm-hmm. and you see his feet, and just the, the slow move. I'm like, okay. I, normally, I'd be like, that's weird, but it, it, it makes sense because like, it's almost like the house is watching him. Mm-hmm. And then like the scene where like he's walking down the hallway, and then the camera has like a an eagle shot of him on top of the ceiling, mm-hmm. yeah, where yeah. it passes through like all those uh, the, wood the, beams. Yeah, and I'm just and it just makes sound like. Vroom. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's like super. Like I don't know. I like I I, I like stuff like that because even like in the the scene with uh, him like chaining his girlfriend, like you get like those like sound effects when he's putting the chains and just ching ching. Because it's right. Like they're not even like big chains, but like I feel like they add impact mm-hmm. to sort of like the situation he's in, right? Yeah. And especially with that stuff, it's sort of like yeah, it's sort of like a you know it adds like like sort of a weirdness to like yeah, the house probably is watching him, you know. No, but, but like it even goes back to like the the the, the use of emptiness of like the quiet sounds, because like there's that moment where Scott, the the other male guy, mm-hmm. is like he he's looking for his girlfriend and he looks out the window, and I was like, oh my god, this is like a cool cast camera motion because he's looking to the left, but the camera's to the right, and the moment he looks the other way, the camera goes the other way too. Mm. I was like, oh, that is so. I don't know why I like. That. It's yeah. just so cool. It, 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 I think it's like what we were saying. It's like something is watching them, and it makes it feeling very unsettled. Yeah, yeah. Because like something's there, and plus, like considering like the lore of Evil Dead, we never see whatever this spirit or presence that's following, like the the thing that that goes around in the woods. Mm-hmm. We never see what that is. Yeah, because like that thing, that thing's been following them since they got there. Basically, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and like we never see what it is, and it's in. I feel like na- I feel like anyone nowadays would be like, would maybe be a little upset that we never get to see like this thing. But like, it makes sense for this movie because like, it's not a monster, it's not like a person, it's like a spirit. Yeah, you can't yeah. see it. <laughs> yeah, it, I was gonna say it's sort of like a it's a force. Yes, yes, that's a better use. Yeah, like it's 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 sort of like this force that sort of just you know is around this cabin, right? Mm-hmm. These these neck of the woods. That sort of just dictates what's going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, it's it, yeah, it, it does make sense that you don't see it because, well, how do you sort of uh, showcase what an unearthly force looks like? You don't. Yeah, it's it's very kind of, in a way kind of like Lovecraftian. Like you, like if you, like I'm not saying if you see it, you go crazy, but like you just can't fathom the idea of it. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's a good, 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 good comparison. Yeah. To make, yeah. I think that's about as much as I can say about this movie, aside from the fact that you should probably go watch it. Yeah, like if you want like some grade A horror with like uh, lots of gore. It is age though. We have to admit to that. Yeah, yeah, I will say that it is like from the early '80s, um, and it does. There are like you know, there's clearly you can tell like there's a little. Uh, you know, it does look old, and obviously there's like some effects that don't aren't quite as good. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, I mean, and I think some of the costuming stuff doesn't look particularly that great. I mean, uh, oh no, there's a scene where like the guy's like punch, like like hitting like the the possessed sister, and like that's clearly a doll. <laughs> yeah, and it's like because <laughs> that does not look anything like her. Yeah, it's pretty funny, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's just, uh, yeah, if you, if you go into that stuff, you know, just be aware of that. It's, it's, I mean, I feel like also people would want to, like, go look at the, at the reboot, and I'm not saying you shouldn't, 
Because the reboot has some cool stuff too. Uh, but I feel like it's more interesting to see where it all started. Yeah, and to be fair, like uh, the reboot, you know, like I guess it was, with watching the original, you can immediately like if you want to transition into Evil Dead Two and Army of Darkness and stuff. I mean, heck, is it, didn't they make a TV show as well? Yeah, and the TV show was fun. Sad it got canceled, but it was fun. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you got what two seasons? That's pretty Three solid. Seasons. Oh, yeah, that's solid. That's yeah, solid. That's solid. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, overall, uh, the Evil Dead, uh, pretty good movie. Uh, go watch it mm-hmm. if you're into horror and want to, you know, see some truly creepy shit. You know what I would also uh, want? I mean, this might we might do this one of these days. We might check out Dark Man, his uh, his original superhero movie. Oh yeah, I re- uh, yeah I think I remember with Liam about Neeson. That. <laughs> it's it's funny because like also I think we forgot to mention like Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi are like childhood friends or like they went to high school together and like they and that car is like sentimental to the two of them because not only is it the the car that, that the car he had when he was in high school but I think there's also other reasons but I'm not gonna go into that. Oh <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. For Sam, not for Bruce. All right, but, uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, but no, it's 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 and that's it started like a long, long running friendship with them because Bruce Campbell does show up in Spider Man. Yeah, he gets in all three movies. Yeah, he gets uh, various cameos, and I think there, wasn't there like uh, the original draft for uh, uh, Spider Man Four? Oh, he was Mysterio. Yeah, he was gonna be Mysterio, which would made total sense. Yeah. So yeah, you know, yeah. A B movie, a B movie actor playing a B movie villain. Yeah, yeah, B, yeah. You know, not so. the same. Not the same. That's not shade to, to to Bruce Campbell. I love the man. He's a, he's great. But that was that is perfect. Also, um, going back to Dark Man, because the whole idea is that you know, um, Dark Man changes his face and stuff. At the end of the movie, he changes his face to Bruce Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Uh, anyways, guys, it's uh, our review. Uh, like Joyce said, go check out the movie. It's really good. Um, but if you like what you heard, be sure to follow us on all social medias, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. At the Geese Centurions, we are more active on Instagram, where you'll see a lot of our stuff. There are, there's also a link on our Instagram to all the podcasts and sites that we are officially part of, like like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Spandora, Spotify, all that good stuff. We have a link to, the YouTube, to our YouTube, where you can comment, like, subscribe to the video version of this episode uh, for all you audio listeners out there. Also, we do have a Patreon. It's really, it's always there for anyone who wants to help us out. We'll take anything. And yeah, that's about it. It's been me, your boy, Eli. It's been me, Joe. And watch out for the Evil Dead. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, it's got to go on. Peace.